Hello and welcome to Frontrunner Motorsport. And as we head ever nearer to the end of 2021, we are seeing more and more race series come to an end for the year. One that finished recently was the DTM and it closed with one of the best races I have seen all year in any race series. It was an absolute classic with three drivers fighting for supremacy, drama, action and a surprise winner. But DTM has not always been this way. So let's take a look at the rise and fall and rise and fall and rise of the German touring car slash GT series. Nearly at 500 subscribers now, so hit that button and get us to that next big milestone. And with that, let's begin. Welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. The first DTM series or Deutsche Produktionswagen Meisterschaft was held in 1984 and was literally a German touring car championship. It was almost a replacement of the old Deutsche Rennsport Meisterschaft, which ran until 1985 and had originally started as a touring car championship but now had a field of expensive and powerful Group C sports cars instead and was being dominated by Porsche. The DTM was cheaper with a whole host of different cars from Ford Mustangs and Chevrolet Camaros to BMWs and Mercedes to Alfa Romeo, Rover, Volvo, Fiat, Volkswagen and Opel. It was a diverse championship if nothing else, won by Volker Streisek in a Gubin Sport BMW 635 CSI despite not winning a race all year, which must have pissed off the DTM organisers. The series grew in popularity over the next few years, attracting higher calibre drivers and actual manufacturer entries from Mercedes, BMW, Alfa Romeo, Audi and Opel. It peaked in popularity around 1993, when the series had TV ratings similar to Formula 1, and some of the most exciting racing around at that time. But the cars were becoming expensive and complicated, with the most modern materials being used, all-wheel drive, ABS, Kevlar chassis. Soon the smaller teams were gone from the sport and the move to more international circuits led to the 1996 International Touring Car Championship, far removed from the origins of the series. The series was expensive to enter, dull to watch and was dead and buried before 1997 rolled around, with manufacturers all pulling their support. The series was revived in the year 2000 with Opel and Mercedes entering the new championship, now known as the Deutsche Tourenwagen Masters. With one eye now kept on keeping costs down and keeping a large part of the series in Germany, it did still keep its history which made it a rare case of a new series having a prestigious history to fall back on. At Sportline were a late entry to the series with a special dispensation given to their TTs that didn't technically fit the rules, but was allowed to enter anyway. Some top glass drivers returned such as Bernd Schneider, Manuel Reuter, Claude Ludwig, Joachim Winkelhock, Stefano Modena. Honestly, there are a ton of top class names in the field but no one could stop Schneider from adding to his 1995 championship win. Audi would enter as a manufacturer in 2004 and all three car makers involved decided to switch to saloon shaped cars and move away from two door coupes. But Opel would leave the championship before 2005 as part of a company wide cost saving effort. Mercedes and Audi continued on with some epic battles between Gary Paffett and Matthias Ekstrom along with other big names such as Mika Hakkinen, Bernd Schneider, Ralph Schumacher, Heinz Harold Frentzen, Laurent Aiello, Christian Albers and many others. This in my opinion was the best era of DTM, with drivers even landing Formula 1 drives. 2010 champion Paul Deresta ended up at Force India in 2011 and 2015 champion Pascal Wehrlein would move to Manor and Sauber. At some point though, there was a downturn in entertainment value. A lot of the older names had retired from the sport or moved on and the racing had got gimmicky and dull. BMW joined the series in 2012 and immediately dominated their first DTM season in 20 years and in 2013 the drag reduction system from Formula 1 was introduced apparently to make racing more interesting but in my opinion DRS has done the opposite in both series. They fiddled with the format of race weekends and changed qualifying and moving from laps to a time limit for the races but the DTM became a very hard series to watch. Mercedes left the series after 2018, Aston Martin came and went in 2019 and 2020 saw a battle between Audi and BMW with Rene Rass taking his third title. But Audi announced their intention to leave the series after 2020 with DTM fast becoming a one-make series with 10 BMWs in the field. 
big changes needed to be made. So the series moved to a GT3 format. This allowed private teams and new manufacturers to get their foot on the grid, with Audi and BMW joined by a returning Mercedes, as well as series debuts for Ferrari, Lamborghini, McLaren and Porsche. It also brought some big names with Alex Albon and Liam Lawson driving for Ferrari, Maximilian Gotze and Daniel Giancadella returning to the series as well as some old hands in Marco Whitman and Mike Rockefeller, amongst many others. I was sceptical about the move to GT because there are already so many GT series out there. I thought DTM might just become another GT series. But with the high caliber of drivers and very entertaining racing, it was the best move possible and I think DTM has a bright future. 2021 might have ended with controversy and many have mixed feelings about the final race at the Norris Ring. For what it's worth, I both think a lot of bad happened, but it was hella entertaining. Van der Linde should have got a bigger penalty for his ridiculous move at the first corner that took out Liam Lawson. But Gotze can't be punished for Mercedes team orders. It's just part of racing and it took a lot of luck to have so many Mercedes around him. But all year the racing has been really good. Something I've not said about DTM in a long time. And I am really looking forward to 2022 with Rene Rast rejoining the series. It's going to be interesting just watching what manufacturers line up on the grid and what drivers will be with each team. DTM is a series that, for all its faults over the years, has a very intriguing history and I want to cover the series more on this channel, so if you want to see that, let me know in the comments. Tell me your thoughts on the new format and the final race as well. Remember to subscribe for more motorsport content, plenty of videos every week and nearly at 500 now, so please subscribe if you haven't. Leave a like and tell your friends as well as hitting the bell to be notified when new videos are released. Thank you for watching and have a good one.